Using your preferred browser and search engine, search for GhostBSD. And when you find the links to the main page, you can either download directly there or go to the actual page itself and search. So clicking on the download link will take us to the download page. And at the top, you can see the official GhostBSD image link. Now, there are some latest builds, which are more or less test releases and a community build. But for this video, we'll be just looking at the officially supported Mate edition. On the download page, you will see the minimum system requirements are listed. Most people's systems will actually exceed these, so really it's just a, a basic guide. And a little note at the bottom saying that GhostBSD cannot be successfully installed on the system with less than 4 gigabytes of RAM. Clicking on the direct download, you can get Canadian, French, Norwegian, South African and um, United States mirror. And for this purposes, I'm selected the French one because it's closer to where I am. And you can begin the download. Once downloading has begun, you'll be presented with a thank you page where you will find links where you can donate some money to the project. And a link to where you can receive some help, either from the forums or the various social media platforms where you can find a GhostBSD presence. Next, we're going to actually create the boot device on a USB stick. Open in the terminal and go into the folder where the newly downloaded ISO image is. We're going to use DD to write it to the USB device. And on the screen, you will see the different versions for BSD, Linux, and Mac. And Windows, you're best using something like Belena Etcher to write the image to disk. But because I'm doing this on a BSD machine, a FreeBSD machine, I'm going to use the top example. You obviously change the ISO image name to whichever one you've downloaded. And the 4M at the end, if your device can take that, leave it at 4M. If not, then just use 1M. And in this case, I'm writing to a SanDisk Ultra Fit 64GB USB 3.1 flash drive. It shouldn't take too long, depending on the speed of your USB stick. Once that's done, we'll get on to using the live session. <laughs> Right, here is the USB device waiting on my table ready to be used and putting it into the back of my test machine. There we go, in it goes. We'll start the machine up and it should boot from it. Providing you've set the boot device uh, to USB in the BIOS. Right, here we are. We're booting the system up. You can see various messages telling it's reading the, the BIOS and recognizing the drives. And once that's done, we should get a menu. There we go. And here is the GhostBSD boot menu. The option one is boot into the system normally, which is the default behavior. Option two, boot into a single user maintenance mode. Option three, allows setting or unsetting of loader variables. Option four, to restart the machine. Option five, enables selection of desired graphics device. Option six, select the kernel if there's more than one. And seven, Change boot option for this boot session. But most people will just press enter, which will select option one by default. Now this will start the boot process. I will fast forward this boot process. Um, we don't want to be waiting to see every single message pop up on the screen. But what it's doing basically is loading the entire operating system into available memory, into RAM. And that's why you need a system of at least four gigabytes. And there we go. There's the desktop. VirtualBox client message on the right hand side at the top, you can ignore that. That's just basically because it doesn't recognize this as a VirtualBox session. And the desktop is standard for GhostBSD with the same wallpaper that I had for quite a while now. The icons on the screen is computer, GhostBSD home, install GhostBSD, and a trash. The top one will just let you view the system directories and file system. And then the home directory. I'll just move that there where you'll keep all your personal files, etc. And trash, which is self-explanatory, really. Let's close them down. And at the top, you get an applications menu, places and system. You have a volume, a network, which is not enabled, and a clock and calendar. Let's click on there as a calendar. At the bottom, you've got your virtual desktops. And you've got a show desktop. So say, for instance, you had 
uh, but just open up a folder and you press that and it will just show you what's underneath that. Pretty standard. Having a look at the applications menu on the accessories, you get character map in Grandpa, Mate calculator, font viewer, search tool, passwords and keys, plank, pluma, root terminal, and you can take a screenshot. And the graphics, you've got Eye of Mate, Image Viewer, Mate Color Selection, and Shotwell. Internet, you've got Firefox and Transmission. Office, you've got Atrill, Evolution, and Mate Dictionary. Sound and Vision, you've got Rhythmbox, Sound, and VLC Media Player. System Tools, you've got Kaja, Log File Viewer, Mate Disk Uses Analyzer, Mate System Monitor, Terminal, Power Statistics, Deconf Editor, and Fish. Places, you've got your home folder, desktop, computer, this mirrors what you see on the desktop itself, your network, connector server, and Mate search tool. And the bottom one, recent documents, but because we haven't used it, we haven't got none. And on the system, you've got preferences, and that covers hardware, internet and network, look and feel, and personal. And under hardware, you've got displays, keyboard, keyboard shortcuts, mouse, power management, time and date manager. Internet and network, you've got network proxy. Look and feel, you've got appearance, main menu, pop-up notification, screen saver, station tweak, and windows. So you can change how they all look. And under personal, you've got about me, assistive technology, file management, preferred applications, and startup applications. Under administration, you've got print settings, software station, and update station. And we have control center, which basically just mirrors what's available in the menu under system. So all them there, you'll find in one central area with a few of us. You've got help. About, I'm going to have a look at that. It's uh, Mate Desktop 1.26.0. So at the time of this video, it was actually the latest. And on the desktop, right clicking, you can create folder, create launcher, create document, open terminal, organize desktop by name, keep aligned, lock icons position, and change desktop background, which we'll have a look at what's available. And here you have a basic set of rather nice environmental and natural pictures. You've got a theme, which is based upon uh, Vimex. And fonts, you can change the settings. So, for instance, on an LCD, just tap that one to make them look a little bit better. And interface where you can change any icons that do actions. So we're just going to open up a terminal and change it to root. There's no password required in the live session. And because my internet is not configured, uh, this test machine can be a little bit quirky, I'm going to start up BSD config. Now this is a very useful cursors-based uh, tool, which will allow you to change settings of almost every aspect of your system. In this case, we're doing network, so I'm going to change the DNS uh, name servers, the default router and uh, gateway, your settings will be different, of course, and you may not need to use this if it detects your network straight away, which it should do. Disable DHCP, and I'm going to put in an IP address, which I use for this test machine. And change the netmask. Save and exit. And you should bring it up. Do you want to bring up the interface? Yes. And that should be that. Use ping to ping good old Google. So the internet is working and it should remember it onto the installation. Talking of which, one thing it won't remember on installation is if anything that you create in the live session, say for instance folders or a text document, etc., will not be carried over to the actual install. This is not like Nomad BSD where it's a, a truly portable OS. This is a live session to do some basic stuff, not to actually use as a permanent solution. Okay, time to start the install. So we double click on the install GhostBSD icon and it will bring up the GhostBSD installer. You're presented with language selection at first and you get quite a very large list of available languages which is quite impressive and select the one which applies to yourself. Because I'm in the UK I'm going to select English UK 
and you click on next. If you make a mistake or you change your mind, you go back and you can undo it. And if you want to cancel the install, press cancel. But we don't want to do that. We actually just want to install. So going back, double click on it again and we get presented with the same page. So we'll go down to English UK again and we'll click next. Next, it's keyboard layout. You can leave it that if it's yours, and in which case, that's that's perfectly fine. And keyboard models, unless you specifically need to choose a model that you've got, then just leave it at the default. If you want to uh, change anything specifically, then you can use user defined custom layout. But I'm going to be searching for English UK, because my keys will be all over the place if I don't. And there's English UK. Like I say, you can choose the model of the keyboard if it's listed, or you want specific uh, versions, or configurations going but I'm going to leave it at the default which selects it automatically and we're on to the time zone selection now choose the continent or the time zone that you want I've got Europe and it will be London of course you could choose Lisbon or you could choose Jersey or Kaliningrad or Isle of Man any really but choose the one that applies to yourself and next we've got the actual disk configuration. The default is to leave it at full disk configuration, which is, uh, I would suggest that's the one you do. But if you need to do some custom partitioning, if you want a dual boot, for instance, uh, this is the one that you choose. Uh, the one at the bottom is obviously your memory stick that you've installed to. And the top is the hard drive or hard drives that you want to install to. And I'm going to go back because I want the default layout full disk configuration and we click next and ZFS configuration I use a ZFS by default and you can choose your pool type you've only got one disk so it'll be single disk configuration but say for instance you had two or three or four five or two disk stripe you know whichever applies to yourself most people will probably choose either single disk or mirror pool name you can leave it at the default or you can change it to which uh, whichever you want can change it to um, oh, I don't know you could change it to tank or you could change it to uh, I don't know your favorite youtuber robot force ZFS 4k block size yes leave that as uh, default and you select the drive you want to install to again the bottom one is the memory stick so we don't want to do that and the top one is the only drive in this test machine so it's that 80 gigabytes it's not huge but it'll do for this and swap size you leave it at default and click next next is the boot options the top one and the second one are grayed out because they don't apply to this particular machine or session uh, this is the only operating system on here so we don't need uh, boot manager or we're not using EFI next is root password you need a root password which you can remember uh, if you forget it, then you're going to be locked out of uh, doing anything like installing, etc. It will tell you if it's super weak, fairly weak, strong, fairly strong, uh, super strong. I won't remember one that strong, so I'm going to keep it fairly easy. And it's telling me it's super weak, of course. You verify password, make sure that it's the same one. If it doesn't match up, uh, it will tell you. And if it does match up, it gives you a nice tick. Once they match up and you're happy with that, next. Next, you need to set up a user. So put your real name or a name if you want at the top there and when you type in the name at the top it's mirrored in the host name and username section so robonuggie at the top and then robonuggie the host name and robonuggie as the username which is quite convenient really so you can change that obviously to any host name that you want you could change it to hello as your real name and it'll change the corresponding sections as well so we just change that back to uh, robonuggie and happy with that. Next, you need a password for the user. Again, for the same process as we went through for the super user. Type in one which well, you can remember easily. And then it's asking you to select a shell. Now you get a lot of selection here. You can have a bond shell or a seashell, etc. And the default is fish, or you can use bash, rbash, etc. I prefer the bond shell. But if you're a Linux user, you, you might want to use the, uh, the bash one. So I'm just going to use plain old bond shell and in start the install. I'm going to run the timer to see how long it takes. It doesn't take a long time to install GhostBSD and I'm just going to fast forward as the timer is counting. Just let it go forward. And this is not, I'm not using an SSD or anything fancy like that. This is a plain old simple mechanical hard drive. I'm getting towards the end, I think. 
Well, looks like we're almost there. And we did. Six minutes, 35 seconds. Not bad at all. And when you restart or reboot, you'll have a fully working, FreeBSD-based desktop operating system. Right, so we're going to reboot. There we go. The boot options look the same. We'll go through the boot process. I'm not going to speed this up so you can see it in real time. And there we go, we've got the login screen. I'll just put the password in, ready to log in, and show you the top. There's the host name that we put in. There's some uh, assistive technologies if you require them. Shows you the keyboard layout, the current time, and a power switch. Right, I'll just hit enter on that. And we should log into a newly installed Mate desktop. There we go. Lovely, lovely. It looks the same as it did in the live session, of course, but there are some differences. There is um, oh, the missing icon to install, and the home folder is being named after the user, which is uh, pretty obvious, really, when you think about it. Everything else remains the same. So, yes. And this is how you get started with GhostBSD. It really couldn't be any easier. And in the next video, I'll show you how to install, uninstall software and how to update the system. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.